is taken from Luke chapter 14, starting at verse 15. And it can be found on page 737. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I have just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes and make them come in, so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those men who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, good morning, everyone. Do keep uh, that passage open in front of you. We're going to think about it together. Uh, and before we do that, I'm going to pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do uh, thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his teaching uh, about uh, yourself and your kingdom. And we pray that you would help us to understand this parable that he taught this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, hands up if you like a party. Hands up if you like a party. The food, the drink, the games, the music, the dancing, the cake. Well, I am going to have a party. I'm going to have a party for my birthday. It's not actually my birthday till September. <laughs> But I thought, if the king can have two birthdays, then why can't I? <laughs> so I'm going to have a party. And I've got some invitations to give out. <laughs> Who wants to come to my party? Pam, <laughs> Pam. Uh, um, um, no, Pam. Um, I haven't... I've got an invite for you. <laughs> Dave, I do have an invite for you. <laughs> Who else? Who else wants to come to my party? George? Playing <laughs> Sophie? Here <coughs> <Good> Sophie. <laughs> Gary! Yeah, got one for you as well. Great, my invitations have gone out. Now, of course, I need to get the RSVP done. I need to find out who can actually come. So let me check. Dave, can you make it? I think you can. I think you can. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sophie, can you make my party? Yes. <laughs> and Gary, can you make my party? Great. Good stuff. So the invitations, they've gone out. I've got the responses. Everyone can make it. We just have to wait for it to be the party. It's soon, but not quite yet. While we're waiting, why don't we have a look at the bit of the Bible that we've just looked at. In this bit of the Bible, Jesus is talking about a party. Jesus was eating a meal with some of the Pharisees and experts in the law, and he's told them some parables about a feast, which is a bit like a party. 
And this causes one person to say, Blessed is the man who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Well, he's right in what he says. To eat at the feast in God's kingdom is a wonderful thing. It is being at the best party you could ever be at. Imagine you were invited to the best party in the world. Beyonce singing. Gordon Ramsay doing the food. Peter Kay doing the entertainment. Spider-Man doing the games. Unlimited chocolate cake. Well, you'd say yes, wouldn't you? Well, the people who are invited to my party, they don't need to imagine the best party in the world because they've been invited to it. But the feast in the kingdom of God, that's going to be even better. Surely we would all say yes to going to God's party. But Jesus tells us another parable to make us think about whether we would say yes or not. And his parable is a bit of a warning. Because there's a danger that some people might say no. Well, let's have a look at this parable. So verse 16 and 17. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servants to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. The party's ready, we've got our drinks, we've got our plates, some crisps. What else have we got? Oh, some drink. Yeah. Oh. Some chocolate. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> some balloons. There we go. Use that balloons at a party, don't you? without the, you know, the, the big centerpiece cake, <laughs> big chocolate cake, here it is. <laughs> so the banquet is ready and he's invited many guests and it seemed like they've replied and said yes we can come. We can make it to your banquet. Well now, we have my party. Now when we have parties there, we tend to say, here's a time, here's a date, here's a place. For example, it'll be on the 12th, is it 12th today or is it 11th? 12th. 12th, it's on the 12th of February, 11 a.m. at the Glebe. <coughs> But it worked a bit differently back then. When you were having a party, you would invite people, and you'd tell them when it would be, but they wouldn't actually come until someone came to fetch them. So you'd send someone out who would come and say, the, the party's ready, come now. And because they didn't have mobile phones, believe it or not, they couldn't text, they had to send someone to actually go and get them. And so that's what happened in the parable that Jesus told. The man who was putting on the banquet, he sent a servant out to go and get the guests. So let's find out what happened. So I'm going to use my party guests to show you what happened. So my servant has gone out to Dave 
And he said, the party's ready. Please come now so you can enjoy it. Well, what do you think Dave is going to say? We might think he'd say, yes, of course, I'll come straight away. I'm very excited. And looking at my party, maybe that's what Dave wants to say. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not what Dave is going to say. Dave is going to say, I've just bought a deal. <laughs> and I need to go and see it. I need to go and see this deal that brought. Please excuse me. If he bought a deal, he needs to go and see it. <coughs> now, does this sound like a good excuse? No. It's a rubbish excuse. It's rubbish because he knew the party was coming. He said yes to it. And it's rubbish because did he really buy a deal without seeing it first? And if he did, can't it wait just a little bit longer? Does he really have to go and see it right now? It sounds like this is really just an excuse because he doesn't want to go to the feast. He must think he has more important things to do. And that sounds a little bit silly, if you ask me. Well, maybe we'll have better luck with my next guest. So, Sophie, the party's ready. Please come now and enjoy it. Well, what do we think Sophie's going to say? Again, she might want to say yes. Of course, I'll come right away. I can't wait for the party. I, I love a bit of cake. <laughs> Again, maybe that's what Sophie wants to say. <coughs> not what you're going to say. <laughs> Instead, you say... I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Well, here's the oxen. It's not actually an oxen, it's, it's a cow. <laughs> it's close enough. And you just bought five yoke of them. Now, a yoke is two oxen, so you've just bought ten oxen. That is a lot of oxen. oxen. You would be very rich. But is this a good excuse? Well, no. Again, it's a rubbish excuse. It's just like the first person. <laughs> Did they really buy the oxen without checking them out first? That would be a bit risky. And even if you did, they can wait till tomorrow. They'll have to go and check them out now. The oxen will still be there. So once again, this sounds like an excuse because they don't want to go to the party. I think they've got better things to do. Maybe they think the party won't actually be very good. Or they think they're better off just doing their own business. Maybe you think, just do my own thing and look after myself. Once again, if you ask me, it sounds silly. And it's a bit more than silly, but it's actually a bit dis disrespectful because they said they were going to come to the party, but now they're pulling out at the last minute. Well, maybe it will be third time looking. The servant goes out again. Gary. The party's ready. Come now and enjoy it. But what is Gary going to say? Yes, of course, I can come right away. I've been looking forward to dancing all week. <laughs> Maybe that's what you want to say, but no. What do you say? I just got married, so I can't come. First off... <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Who's a lucky lady? <laughs> well, getting married, that's, that's great news. And of course, things do change when you get married. You do lose a bit of the freedom you once had. You can't just swan off to parties all the time. But is this a good excuse to miss the party? 
No. It's a rubbish excuse. Firstly, why just marry him, get married, stop you going to a party? Well, back then, when you got married, you, you, you did get excused from certain things. So, for example, if you were recently married, you wouldn't go to war. So there's nothing to stop you going to a party. As we said before, he knew the party was coming. He'd already said yes. Presumably he knew he was getting married when he said yes to the feast. Or he knew he was going to a feast when he said yes to getting married. Either way, the point is that having got married is not an excuse. And perhaps he realises because unlike the other two, he didn't even say, please excuse me. He obviously decided he didn't want to go to the feast after all. He had better things to do. But did he? Or has he in fact missed out? Has he made the wrong choice? Well, thank you to my volunteers. You've obviously got better things to do, so I'll, I'll leave you alone now. Go and see your field, go and see your oxen, go to your wife. When the servant gets back to his master and reports what's happened, the owner of the house is angry. And he's right to be angry. He prepared this party for all these people. They said they would come. And now his feast is looking a little empty. It looks like it might go to waste. But that is not actually the case. That is not going to happen. The party won't be delayed, it won't be cancelled, and it won't be ruined. The feast will go ahead just as planned. Because more people are going to be invited. The man said, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. These are the people who you might not expect to be invited to the party. Back then, these people would not have been part of the in crowd. Probably they would have been shunned by some people. But now, they're going to get an invite to this great feast. And it seems like they're going to take the invite up. Verse 22 says, Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there's still room. Even with all these new people, the feast is not full. There's still space. And that won't do. The party needs to be full. He wants all this effort he puts in to be enjoyed by people. And so he says in verse 23, Go out to the roads and country lanes and make them come in, so that my house will be full. The host of the feast wants the invite to go out even further. He wants everybody to be invited. He says to the servant to make people come. Now that doesn't mean to drag people to the feast against their will. If he was going to do that, he could have done that in the first place with the original guests. What he means is that the servant needs to convince people to come. To make the invite so appealing that people can't say no. These are people who would not have known the host. So they're, they're going to need to be given a good reason for why they should come. And the master says... Give them the reason. Well, my invite now is going to go out to other people. So, those people who didn't get originally get invited, but would have liked to come to my party, who would like to come? <laughs> Zachary, would you like to come here? John, you want to go on? Um, any children want to come? Come to the front, come to my party. You get into the party. <laughs> You want a party popper? Be very careful you point them. <laughs> Don't do them yet. You're one now, you're one. Anyone else for a party popper? <laughs> uh, what about, well let's, let's do our party poppers now, so pull, put, put, them, put them in the air and pull the string. Oh. Hey. Hey.
why don't you go back to your parents and sit down and eat your cake? <laughs> Well, we don't quite know how the feast goes, we're not told, but we do know that the host wants it to be full. So presumably the servant just keeps going out and keeps bringing more people in until it is finally full. But we see that point in what Jesus is telling in the parable in verse 24. I tell you, not one of these men who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Jesus' point is that those who say no to the invitation will miss out. They won't even get a taste of the banquet. There won't be any cake sent home to them. There won't be a second chance. The feast will not be delayed until they're ready. If they say no to the invitation, they will miss out on the feast. The party's going to go ahead, whether they're there or not. The party will be full, whether they're there or not. They're not crucial to the party, and they won't be missed. But what's this all about? Well, remember, this is all about the feast in God's kingdom. This is about heaven. This is about going to be with God at the great feast. And Jesus wants to make us think whether we will accept his invitation to heaven, to go to this feast. Now we said at the start the answer might be obvious. Of course we will. But the warning of the parable is that this might not be the case. People are going to say no. Well, why might people say no? Well, because accepting the invitation means making a commitment. It means committing ourselves to Jesus and his way of doing things, of his way of living. It means giving up the control we have over our lives. And maybe some people doubt whether there really is going to be a feast at all. They might think they're better off trusting themselves rather than, than risking looking forward to something that doesn't happen. <laughs> and so they say, no thank you, I'll look after myself. Others might wonder whether the feast in God's kingdom is going to be any good. Maybe it's going to be a bit boring or a bit rubbish. They might think they're better off making their own plans. They might think that they can have more fun if they do it their way. Other people might think they don't have time to think about God's feast in his kingdom right now. They've got more important things to be getting on with. I will get on with that once I've done the other things. I need to think about my job, where I'm going to live, my family. I need to think about all those things first. And then maybe after those, then I'll get around thinking about the invitation to heaven. Others might think it's just too much of a commitment. They don't want to have to do things Jesus' way. They don't want to have to trust him and follow his rules. The cost of going to the kingdom, it's just too high. They think it's better for them to be in charge for themselves and for them to decide what's best. But to think like that in all those different ways means we're in danger of missing out on the best party ever. But it's worse than just missing out on a party. Because if we say no, to the invitation to God's feast in his kingdom, then we won't even get a taste of heaven. We won't get a taste of all the good that God offers. And without all the good, we're left only with bad. Without heaven, we're left with hell. So this isn't just about missing out on one party. This is missing out on the party that lasts forever. This is actually a matter of life and death. So the question is, how will we respond? 
But as well as a warning, there is good news in the parable as well. Because when Jesus told this parable, people thought that only a small group of people would be invited to heaven. They thought it would just be the Jewish people. And even then it would only be those who were religious and good. Not the sinners and the outcasts. But in this parable, Jesus is showing us that the invite is going to go out to everyone. Not just the Jewish people, but Gentiles, non-Jewish people as well. And not just those who are good and religious, but to sinners. Even those people you might not expect to be invited. This is not just for the popular people, not just for the in crowd. This invitation is for everyone. Maybe you're sitting here this morning thinking you're not good enough, you don't deserve an invite to heaven. But Jesus said, the invite is there. Please come along. You are very welcome. Heaven is not just for perfect people who have it all sorted. In fact, Jesus warns that those people who think like that are in danger of missing out. Because they might say no when the final invite comes. No, heaven is for all those who accept the invite, but for those who know, it's not because of their goodness and kindness, but the goodness and kindness of the one who hosts the feast. The goodness and kindness of God. So the invitation to heaven is there. If you haven't received it before, you've received it now. But how will you respond? Don't be like those in the parable that thought they had more important things to do. Instead, say yes to the greatest party there will ever be. I'm going to finish in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the great peace that you are going to host in your kingdom in heaven. We thank you that you invite us all to come, no matter who we are, no matter what we have done. And we pray that you'd help us to think very carefully about how we will respond to that invitation. We pray that we would not be like those who thought they had other things to do. But we will come with joy and gladness into your peace. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.